Luda gonna come in the track and eat in the back and whack. Yeah. I love that food saved your life. What food was the saved my life. It was Kentucky Fried Chicken. Thank goodness. Santa lazy ass was lazy sometimes. <laughs> she hit the baby Jesus, not once, but twice. How did you waver the balance between showing that eccentric and kind of comedic attitude, but still saying stuff like, move, bitch, get out the way? I was like 12 years, I started bawling because wow. I felt those lyrics so strong. This, this Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. All right, Sharon, Diane, oh my God. Palmer. Oh, goodness gracious. What are your plans for the holiday? Even though I already know. Um... Well, I do plan on going on the family trip, so oh, I'm yes. excited about that. Um, to an undisclosed location. Yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. And uh, <laughs> just resting, you know. The older I get, I just look forward to just resting, trying to watch Christmas movies. I love Christmas movies. Me too. Um, just, just chilling and watching the kids have fun, you know. What's your favorite Christmas movie? Oh, my favorite Christmas movie. I love um, This Christmas. Oh! Um, I love This Christmas. That's a new, that's like a up, more modern movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But cool. I mean, but all time, like, favorite. Well, I don't know if it's the Christmas movie, but I love Die Hard. Sure. It has Christmas themes. Oh, well, you really love Bruce Willis. My mom <laughs> has loved Bruce Willis all my life. <laughs> like, seriously, all my life, my mom. What is it about Bruce Willis, Sharon? Uh, the first time I saw Bruce Willis. Not the first time I laid eyes on the first, Bruce. The first time <laughs> ever I saw your face uh, was in a TV show called Moonlighting. And I just thought he was so funny in this, in this TV show. It was just hilarious, the <laughs> stuff he was saying. And then it was just like, uh, every, he was just saying so many things. It was funny. It was quick. It was very quick punchlines. And I just thought, wow, this is a, a really fresh talent. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, so that's where I first liked him. But then when I saw Die Hard, all of the Die Hards, but mainly the first Die Hard, um, and then obviously everyone knows the storyline. He's going to see his wife. He and his wife are kind of on the rocks and he's flying, I think from Chicago to LA and it's Christmas theme. The whole first opening scene is, it lets you know it's Christmas. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, I think Die Hard is just a great movie. Oh my gosh. I have actually, don't no one kill me. I've never seen Die Hard. You've never seen <laughs> Die Hard? Oh my gosh. No. Okay. Well, you need to see, we should watch it tonight. Okay, we can watch it. Um. We should watch it tonight. It's a really it's it's a Christmas theme, but obviously, it's a, a action movie. What's so. like the famous lines from there? What's like a famous? Uh, what, oh, um, he doesn't he say something? He says, uh, "Yippee ki yay, yippee ki uh, yay, yay, motherfucker." motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's yeah. an iconic actor. Love Bruce yeah. Willis. Prayers yeah. up for him. I know he was struggling with some stuff this yes, year. Yes, so. yes, to him and his family. Yeah, blessings Absolutely. to him and his family. Mm -hmm. um, okay, my favorite is A Diva's Christmas Carol. It's nothing oh, but Scrooge, yeah. but with my girl Vanessa, Vanessa Williams. It was good. It was such a good one. You know, we yeah. had, let's hear those sleigh bells ringing and ring ding a ding a ding a ding a ding a just jazz everything up yeah. you know i really just love that i like the like yeah, music yeah, yeah. the modern music with it yeah, yeah, yeah. so definitely a big fan of a diva's christmas that carol home alone is always a good one i just went to go see that uh had a, had a friend's date we went to this really cool place called fork and film okay. i literally if anybody is in new york or california and is trying to look for a good little vibe fork and film is the place because they literally show movies really and they feed you the food that's in the movie oh yeah so we went so to see they home alone. pizza in the movie then we they serve pizza. you pizza we had right. shrimp we had the sunday like like we had really literally all the things they even had it like i think the food Food place was named like Nero's Pizza. Like they literally yeah. made a little individual little box of the Nero's Pizza that he was eating in there. Wow. It was just really and cool. How many people are there in the room with you? About like 20. Okay, that's a nice number to control. You know, yeah. yeah. And so we watched the movie and then yeah. we had the food and they had like specialized cocktails. Really? We had the Eminem cookies in the end. Whoa. It was really, really cool. That we is had nice. so, girl, we had Very so nice. much fun. So Home Alone is always a really good classic. Yeah. And then I'm gonna be honest with you, nobody is a better Santa Claus than Tim Allen. Yeah. That was a good one. Tim that's Allen, one. he is so good. I yeah. love him in those movies. Yeah. What about your cartoon? What is your favorite cartoon? Chris Christmas cartoon. I know as a kid it was Santa Claus is coming to town for me. I I've never been into cartoons like that. You know that, Mom. 
<laughs> There's not, not even a Christmas it. cartoon mm-hmm. or episode of Proud Family mm-hmm. or none of that. <laughs> I don't know why I've just never loved cartoons like that. I just always wanted the real people more. Yeah, you more like anything. people. But I do love, you know, I always love, uh, uh, um, don't stay away from my cookies. You know, jingle all the way. Oh, yeah. With, um, oh my God. Sinbad. No, which one was that one? What was the one with Sim? (laughs) Arnold Schwarzenegger, when he was talking to the actor, it's the comedian, rest in peace, Paul Hartman. Yeah. Phil Hartman, my apologies. Okay, yeah, Phil but wasn't Hartman. that the same movie? Wasn't Sinbad in that movie? Yeah, too? he actually was in that movie. Actually, yeah, you're right, Mom. And he, he was, had like they a were quick fighting role. over the toy. Yeah. That's a good one. But I just love Phil Hartman in that scene where, because yeah. you know, the movie, like, on a Schwarzenegger, he's like that dad that just is always working all right, the time. Right, right, and the right, wife right. is like right. tired of it. So Phil Hartman, like, is that neighbor that's like low key trying to sleep with his wife. Yeah. And low key is sleeping with all the wives in the neighborhood. Right. And then he's well, they like, all, uh, all are enamored with him because he's supposed to be this great <laughs> single father. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so then he goes to the house and he's helping her with All the right. cookies and he's like, oh, these cookies. <laughs> and he's like, stay away from my wife's cookies. You know, <laughs> all those those I remember that. I actually really, my dream mm. is to be the father not the actual, not the father, but to be I know what you mean. the father role, but the mom in those kinds of right. movies. Right. Let the mom be the lead. Let, and yeah. also show the working mom and like, you know, I just love that those roles, like when I think about Jingle All the Way or mm-hmm. I think about Tim Allen, Santa Claus, you know, the whole like mom is working all the time and right. it's like, you know, and that's kind of like me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm, right. I've am i always been like, you know, working and, you know, getting my, you know, so I just think there's so many moms also that right. can relate to being yes. in that position and, and too, trying yeah. to be home for the holidays for you, you know, Timmy. Yeah. I just think it'll be so cool to do a movie <laughs> We like ought to that. write that then. You know, Let's go, girl. That's like a dream for me. Or like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. That's I would love to be the scientist one. dad. Yes. But I'm the mom, and I'm like, oh, J- Johnny, I shrunk the kids. Like, I just would love to be the, like, scientist right. mom. That's great. You know? So that's, like, a dream for me. Like, that's, I love those that's movies. Awesome. Um, Okay. Leo. Okay. It's his first Christmas, mom. What are yes. you thinking about that? Leo, this is his first Christmas, Oh, my girlfriend. goodness. Oh, I just think he would love the tree. He love. I think we gotta let him put the star up there. Yeah, I think he would. He likes um, uh, music. He loves music. Loves music. He loves colors. Mm -hmm. You know his little colory thing that lights up. I just think the and he likes simple things. He do. Like he's the type of kid you put all these toys in in a water bottle. He goes after the water bottle. Absolutely. So um, yeah, I just just I want to just see his face. With we should take them to see like Christmas lights. Yeah, that's what Nora was saying. She was yeah. like, they're doing Christmas lights. I think on Friday or something. And she he said would that light up. Him. I can see him so now fun. doing his little hands like this. He do this when he get excited. He would just love it so so much. <laughs> He's the best ever. Yeah, I'm very excited for him to have this first Christmas. I'm excited to just spend it with him. I mean, I know he might not remember his first Christmas, but I'm gonna take right. tons of pictures. And then, like I told you, that friend of mine created those ornaments. They were so cool. Oh my gosh, it was this custom made ornaments where it had all his baby pictures in yeah. these little frames that we could put on the tree. Yeah. But the cool thing about it so is that it was nice. like a keepsake. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because I can do it every single year. Absolutely. I can those he could be 18 years old and you still have those ornaments of him when he was nine months. You know months. what I mean? Yeah. And he can put it on his tree and do it for Give his kids. Give it to kids his and, kids. That's right. Oh, I just think that's just so it's cool. It's a great, great, excellent gift. Whoever so that. yeah, yeah, that was Raj, our sweet Raj. Um, what's your your favorite part of Christmas when you were a kid, mom? Oh, it has to be the surprise. Oh yeah, you yeah, know yeah. you you know my mother would always say make your list for Santa and put the put the things you really want at the top of the list. Oh. You know, so we would do that, and my mother was good. I mean, at the time I was thinking it was Santa, but we would. Of put, course, it was Santa. You mean he was in contact with your mother? Yeah. Okay. Oh yes. yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course, it was Santa. Sharon, <laughs> and, she knows. She's, you know. <laughs> And um my and my mother was good, like she would go four gifts deep, you know? Like if we had a list of ten, we got at least the top four. Aww. Yeah, so no, I my Christmases were great. I don't have any bad Christmases. What was Christmas one of the stories. gifts? You might have to age yourself a little bit. I, what was one of the main gifts you wanted that you got? I think a, a a gift that I got that I just was enamored with was a transistor radio. Not a tri- girl, my, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> You don't know what a transistor radio is, yes. Mama. Okay, transistor radio was a radio that runs on batteries. 
Oh, right. So it's like a little, like they had them. That was a big deal for y'all. That was huge because you could take it to the beach and you could. Oh, what? It was like our version of, I guess, you know. An uh, iPad Nano. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I, you know, what is it? What do they call it? The iPod Nano? Yeah, and it just ran on a battery. And then and then you, they had different sizes. Like, you know, the boom box. It was a. Yes. Uh, and then, but my mother and father brought me a little white one. Oh. With a cute little pink little <laughs> handle, and like you could take the handle and put it on your wrist, oh. so you could walk <laughs> and be swinging your little music. It was, was kind of cute. My bad, and adorable. then and then I had headphones, girl. Wow, your girl, parents got a little money, Sharon. Well, I mean, I you know I was you were stuck in the suburbs. I'm what they call old folks child. <laughs> you know, I was like the last of seven kids, and my mother you were the baby, so you yeah, got my, a lot of good yeah, stuff. Yeah, my mother was like 38, my dad was 42. My mother tells the story of well, we were on our way to get rid of you guys. What? But that's what she said. <laughs> I was on my way to get because I was too old to have kids, and so your dad and I were on our way to to the clinic, oh. and then I looked over and saw something to eat, and. And he said, well, let's go get something to eat. And after we ate, we were like, well, let's just go back home and have these babies. <laughs> <laughs> That's I a, love that food saved your life. What food was the saved place? my life. It was Kentucky Fried Chicken. Thank goodness for Kentucky Fried Chicken. Kentucky I've never loved Fried Chicken. So Kentucky much. saved my <laughs> life. <laughs> Kentucky Fried Thank goodness they anyway, stopped. Thank God for the chicken. I wouldn't be here. Exactly. No. And so anyway, the transistor radio was just, I was so enamored because I, I remember I was about maybe seven or eight and I remember just staring at it like, oh. like how does this work? Oh. I was trying to figure like how the voices were coming out of it. From yeah. out of it. And are there little people inside? <laughs> remember when I used to tell that to you, I would say, so when did, I remember I told my mom one time when I got, I was about five or six years old, I said, so when did the world get color? Ah. And she was like, huh? And I said, well, it was black and white. When did it decide to have color? <laughs> and she was like, no, that's the TV that's making things black and white. Exactly. I thought that it was, they filmed, that they, the world right. had, it was so cra it's but so crazy. But you were always a curious child. That. You were very enamored. <laughs> you were very curious about the sun. I really And was. I had to answer so many damn questions about the sun. I thought I was going to have to study the sun. <laughs> you were like, it's not really yellow, but they say it's yellow. <laughs> Why do they say the sun is yellow, Ma? The sun is hot, but it's not so hot. Why can't we touch the sun, Mama? I'm like, if this girl asked me some more, what was your fascination about the sun? Because I just felt like the answers were never real enough. And until this day, I still don't. I still don't know what's going on. You still have this curiosity about the sun. I still have this sun. curiosity about all what's going on around us and the cosmos and everything else. Okay. It's all quite a lot. Now, I can tell you a Christmas gifts that I got that I did not, I hated. I absolutely what? Dolls. Yeah. I hated dolls. I would pull their heads off. But I did love that doll that y'all had that that y'all let me do the one you remember they used to have the doll where you you could fake feed the baby oh yeah 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 yeah. i love when y'all got yes. me that feed baby doll yes. oh my goodness yes. and you and you guys love the easy bake ovens love too. the easy bake oven yeah. loved yeah, it yeah, oh my goodness I, I remember i brought i made the cookie yes. and ate half of it on the way to see grandma yes i was like oh girl you gave I'm her the sorry. other half i ate all this on the way <laughs> Yeah, I just wasn't into dolls. I don't know. I never was too into dolls. L'Oreal loved them. Yeah. But I remember my first, I can remember, not necessarily my first Christmas, but the first Christmas that I can remember. Mm -hmm. I remember it being, I was probably maybe like four or five years old and we was in the Robbins house. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it was just L'Oreal and I, obviously the twins weren't born yet, mm -hmm. you know, and we wake up and I just remember we had those, uh, you remember those purple tubs y'all used to have? Yes. And it was um, full of toys. And they were full. Full yeah, of toys. Like, yeah. you guys didn't wrap anything right. this um, year in particular. We tried. But I remember coming out <laughs> right. there, and it was just a big old tub of toys. Yeah. That is my first, like, when I remember and I think about Christmas, right. I think about running out there and seeing that tub of all of those Tr toys. Trust me, anytime we didn't wrap stuff, it was a point of contention between <laughs> Larry and I. Larry would be like, we have to wrap it. And I was like, I'm just so tired. Look, just let him come what out What do you here. mean? You mean... Santa? Kinda, no, like, you mean Santa uh, was... You mean that Santa, Santa lazy ass was lazy sometimes. 
And he was tired, and he would come and drop it off. And Santa would say, I don't feel like rapping it. This, and I would go, hey, I'm good with that, we were, Santa. He, once he got to the hood, yeah, he was tired. He was tired. <laughs> and Larry was like, my kids have to have it. He was such a good dad. He's a great I, dad. I was kind of like a little crazy mom, but he was <laughs> he was actually a good dad. He's a great dad. dad. You're a great mom, too. Okay, <laughs> let's get to the good part. Okay. New Year's resolutions all right man tell me what this year taught you you know tell me actually oh, let's break boy. it up and make it good and juicy all right if you can remember coming into 2023 what were your thoughts you know what were you looking forward to in this year and then what did the year ultimately teach you well we were getting ready for a new baby mm -hmm. so i was excited about leo um we were getting ready planning a baby shower yeah and so that was great. You know, we were, you know, new life coming. Mm -hmm. um, did we know it was going to, we knew it was going to be a boy. Yeah, we did. Yeah. So I was happy about having my second grandchild and. Son. Uh, yeah. I knew grandson. what you meant. Yeah. But he's like my child. But yeah. You got it. No, uh, but you was, just, I know yeah, you said grandchild. Yeah. I know what yeah, you yeah. mean though. So anyway, mm -hmm. um, that, so that was probably what I was thinking at the top of the new year and just welcoming new life and being excited about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, and what did the year teach you? The what did year, you learn, you know, if that anything? That family is everything. Yeah. That family is everything, and, you know, you're going to have ups and downs and all kinds of stuff, but if you just have faith and love and family, you can conquer anything. Yes. So coming into 2023 for me, Obviously, same kind of vibe. I was really excited and just thinking about, you know, what is my life going to be like with this new baby? Yeah. What is this baby going to bring to my life? How is my family going to expand? You know, right, what? Right, right. just what, what, what am I going to turn into? Right, you know what right, I mean? Right. And then I think what I learned about this year was that, boy, our children really special and they really can give you a power and a strength that you just didn't know you had. Absolutely. Like, and I got, you know, I always grew, like I grew up in the church and everything like that, but some of those things that I heard growing up or that you read or you think about, you know, God's love for Jesus and Jesus loves for love for God and all of that becomes that much more apparent when it's reflected in your love for your child. That's right. You know what I mean? And I remember just thinking I was at home one night and I was just like, you know, my goodness, like, you know, life sometimes can be really, really, really hard. Like, you could just feel like, you know, right. I, I mean, I've gone through many moments in my life where, ugh, you know, why did I sign this earth contract? You know what <laughs> I mean? Where it's just like, what made right. me decide to come down here? Right. Um, But when you have a child, yeah. yeah, it does something where it's like, you actually, like, it's not even I'll die for you. It's I'll live for you. Right. You know, right. I'll live. Right. I'll 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 be a version of myself I never knew I could be for you because it's worth it if right. it makes sense in some way. No, that makes absolute sense. You know, my mother used to say, when you don't have kids and you're a single person, once you eat a meal, your whole family has eaten. Right. right so it's yeah. like, oh, I ate the sandwich, my whole family has eaten. When you have a child, now, before you eat, you have to think about what they're going to eat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so your whole life is dictated around what it is they can eat. And the relief of it that, it, that, that it's not really about you. I think That's there's right. some type of strength that comes from giving to somebody else that you know really deserves it. Right. And that right. really is worth it. And that and, really could stand to, you know, the world is in, in the same place, but... I'm giving everything I can to this little person because I think that they will they can be the joy for even one person because they're the joy for me. Exactly. Now, let me ask you this. Now that you're, a, a, you know, you're getting into he's about to be one, you know, you're getting to that and you're he's sleeping a little, you know, oh, through yes. the night. What, how does that feel? Like being that mother and having to get up in the middle of the night and breastfeeding and doing all that and now he's sleeping and what how did that feel when you when he first slept for you hmm 
it felt good. It felt good. I felt happy just that he was relaxed. You know what I mean? But I do. I did. I don't know. It's still a it's still an unsettling. I think that it that yeah. happens with just having a kid in the world. I don't think I'll ever really be the same. Yeah. You know, in terms of like I remember how I was before I had a kid, and yeah. it was like I could just go out and have fun. And like even if I know that you're watching him, right. or if I know he's in good care. I still don't really feel the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of I don't course. know if that'll ever change or yeah. what that is, yeah. but it's a, it's like even if I know he's sleeping, he's good, and he's sleeping through the night. There's still a thing of just like right. I don't know. You're responsible for another life. Yeah, that's it's a serious. lot. That's a lot. If you take time to really think about it, you know, you're responsible. It's an insanity, for, kind of. It is, you know, and and like as a mother now, now I'm I have four kids, and so you know. When yeah. I look at all you guys, and you're doing well or whatever like that. I just I, that's really when I do feel like I've done stuff as a mother. Does it feel good for you at least to know that we have each other? Yes. But yeah, because I think yeah. if I think when I have more kids, maybe that can ease out a little bit. Yeah. You know, just to know, like you know, right now it's just Leo. You know, and I want him to have siblings. I want right. you know, I just I want. I mean, he, I'm so happy that you know my L'Oreal and us we live together and the right. he has his cousins and stuff like that. But it's right. just good to know that he's not a lonely. You know, lonesome exactly. Type of thing. No, I think as a for me as a mother, when I see all of you all get together and you're having a good time and you respect each other, you can joke with each other, you can you know have fun with each other. Then that just makes me feel like I've accomplished something as a parent. Yeah, because my family we couldn't do that. We we couldn't take jokes. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like if my brother says something to me that I didn't like, I didn't talk to him for two years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you guys uh, really can hold a grudge. Yeah, it she was, whiz, she rollercoaster. It was crazy. It was kind of <laughs> crazy. Rollercoaster. Dad was real extra. I'll never forget one time me and Laura arguing, and next thing you know, we see Dad like this is the door, and we see Dad stop. He's like <laughs> side of the door. He's like stop. Y'all are sisters. <laughs> Y'all can't be arguing like this. Y'all are sisters, and we're like. How long have you been standing here? Like, <laughs> what is this about? Like, he uh, was serious about yeah. us being close. Like, as soon as that happened, we were, like, hugging each other. Like, we're, like, we're well, so it, sorry it, that we caused you such it's, distraught. It's exactly. But it is a lot about how you were raised, and that's how he was raised. And he was raised at the brother over the, you know, the brother. They, they were all, it was nine of them. Mm -hmm. And so the brother that was the oldest, to the, he was responsible. So yeah. Keith was responsible for Lamont and Larry and Ronald was responsible for Reggie and yeah. whatever the order was. And they really believed that. Stood by it. I yeah. love that. I yeah. love that. I mean, I just love all the traditions of all of our family. You know, when, when I think about the holidays, I think about us going to see Grandma Palmer yes. and then us seeing Grandma Davis and yeah. us bringing her stuff by, bringing her food, bringing them food, us having a big dinner right. at Grandma Palmer's or us having a little dinner at the church. Right. I'll never forget all the things that we would do at church and how my God, Mama Nona would give me my little outfit every yes. night after that long service. I hated how long the church service was, <laughs> but I always liked like the Like the little gift. Oh, yeah. yes. Love the treats yeah. afterward and going home and do you remember <laughs> milk and cookies do you, you probably don't remember but you when you were in the christmas play and oh you're gonna tell the story yeah wow. so so she's doing we were doing the christmas play and they dressed her up like mary the cutest little mary you ever want to see <laughs> and she had the little little veil on and she's walking down the aisle <laughs> her and the little little boy joseph and they get before the the three kings and the baby Jesus is in the basket and everybody's oh she's so cute and as they're saying the little lines from the play and she's up there and Mary no she didn't bend down and hit the baby <laughs> she hit the baby Jesus not once but twice because she wanted to see was it a real baby. <laughs> <laughs> this story has haunted me all my life and I actually said that to y'all like when you guys asked me that's what I said you were about four years old you hit it and then you look back at us and then you hit it again <laughs> and then I said why would you hit the baby Jesus about I want to see was it a real baby <laughs> 
And everybody in the wow. church was like, oh, she is something. That Kiki is something. <laughs> she is something else. Y'all got something on y'all hands. Why would I hit <laughs> the baby Jesus, the fake baby Jesus? That's insanity. And not only hit it, but look back and smile. <laughs> like, like you knew that shit was funny. And then you did it again. It was great timing and everything. I'm like, this girl here is hilarious. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. So now, 2024, it is, you know, approaching us. Yes. What is on the rise for you for 2024? What are your thoughts? What are you thinking about what this new year is going to bring you? Well, I'm actually thinking about moving back to California. Yes, that's huge. Yeah. I've We'd been in love Chicago. to have you. Yeah, but you know, I love I, I I California represents work for me. I know. That's all that's what it re- represents. So as soon as I get part. off of LAX, it's a meeting, yeah. it's a Zoom, it's something. Yeah. And then when I go back to Chicago, that represents rest for me. Right. You know, I'm in a nice little Hamlet town and I'm yeah. vibing out. And so I like the worlds that I've, you know, by the grace of God that's been uh, created for me, you know? Yeah. So I like going back to Illinois in a quiet suburb. You like being by coastal. Yes, because yeah. because the LA is work and Illinois is rest. You know what I mean? I feel the but same my, way you But do. everybody's in LA. So. Well, that's the thing that's happening with yeah. us is that we're a family that likes to stick together. Yes. You know, it's very much giving soul food. Yes. It's like we want to <laughs> be around each other. Yes. So, yes. you know, if, if we're in Chicago, we want to have a place for us to all be. Right. If we're in California, we want to have a place for us to all be. Right. You know, if we're wherever we're at. So that's the thing that we're faced with. And like you said, it really is a blessing for us to even be able to do that or even right. have that conversation. And I also want that for you. You know, I want... You know, I know you love New York, you know. Love New York. I know you love it. I mean, and the reason why you love it is because you can be more freer there yeah. and people are... Chill. It, the industry is not everything there, no, you know. No, they have so many other... Other industries. industries are bigger. Real estate and the Wall Street mm-hmm. and all modeling, all kinds of stuff. So I know that you want to do it, but I, you know, I always am praying that you can find your own little corner Yeah. where you can separate work from regular life, you know, and I'm yeah. always reading stuff. Like I read that Harrison Ford lives in Montana, Wa- Montana or yeah. somewhere, and you know, and there's so many entertainers that are moving to New Mexico. Well, you're talking you about know? 2024, yeah. 2024. That for me is, you know, it's the same storyline I've been telling myself for years, which is, you know, I've always been really responsible. You know, my career and the blessings that it's been able to do for us and turn into our family business, it's yeah. been awesome. But it is a lot of pressure. But I'm, it, it's the skill that I've most sharpened, you know, to be punctual on time, to put, you know, know how to handle my responsibilities with work and show up and, you know, juggle all these different things. And it's very natural to me. But the thing that I'm hoping to do in 2024 is to really learn how to n- not just totally validate myself and what I can do in terms of service for others is to really learn how to do and be of service to myself solely without feeling guilt about it. Um, So 2024, to your point, I I would love to be able to just like be a little bit more selfish, um, you know, be a little bit more, you know, capable of managing that workload a little bit better. Now, it's the same, you know, I feel like this is like, these are the same repeated things, but, you know, 2024, I'm hoping to really give myself the things that maybe I've looked for from others. But you know what this is? This is self-growth. Anytime you're able to self-reflect and to speak about it like you're speaking about it, it's going to happen because you're speaking it into existence (sighs) and it's growth. It really is growth. I feel like and I've been talking about the you. same thing. You know, I, I feel like, yeah. you, you know, I've talked about it over and over and over again. But, you know, I'm trying to be patient with myself. Um, you know, and that's why when everybody asks me in an interview, you know, what is the work-life balance for you? I'm always honest. Look, it's it's an ever, you know, growing thing. And I'm working hard to try and figure it out. But one thing's for certain and one thing's for sure is that Leo has taught me how to love myself so much greater because in order to be the best I can be for him. I have to be the best me I can be. That's right. So he's been the greatest blessing in my life. Amen to that. All right. Well, Mom, this conversation, you know, it really got me even more jazz for Christmas. Oh. You already know that I'm counting down the days, and I'm excited to spread all the Christmas cheer with my guests. Ludacris. Awesome. Baby, this is, this is Kiki. 
Uh, I could not be more excited about my guest today. He is an icon of our generation from his rap music dating back to the 90s to his iconic role on the Fast and Furious series. He's had countless top hits, okay, won a whole bunch of awards, and as of this year, has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Well deserved, if you ask me. Plus, he recently starred in Disney's new Christmas movie, Dashing Through the Snow. Please welcome to the show, the one, the only, Ludacris. Yes, what up? <laughs> What's up? I'm so glad we finally got a chance to do this. We've been, uh, you know, our schedule's both been crazy. So finally, the stars align themselves and I'm we are so here. I'm so happy. And it's so funny because before we get into the holiday spirit, it's so funny. I don't know if you've ever seen the um, memes all over the internet where it's Mary J. Blige sitting next to me in the Runaway Love video, and they talk <laughs> about some, why was that girl going through all that stuff and Mary was just screaming in her face? <laughs> yeah, no, listen, I 100% I have seen those. And it's crazy because a lot of people do not realize that that's where we first met each other. And yes. this was, you know how many years ago it was, but, you know, I'm like, but the, the memories and how long our history is, is it goes all the way back to that Runaway Love video. And thank they you. They don't know. I couldn't thank you enough for that. Oh, my gosh. I can't thank you enough for that. And the connection that I've had to you, to Shaka since then. I mean, you guys have had me under your wing since then. I think I was, what, 12 years old when I did that? And y'all always well, stayed in touch, well. you know, hooked yep. me up whenever, however, and just always have my back. So I definitely love you always. You know that. No, nah, we love you back. And we could not be more proud of you. <laughs> And your evolution in this game, man, touching all aspects of the entertainment industry. And I can't wait to see where you take it from here. Oh, my gosh. Well, I have great people like you to look to. And now, I mean, this is, this is all about the holiday spirit. You know, I love Christmas. I know you just had the Christmas movie come out. So I just thought you'd be a perfect guest for this episode. And also, you know, you've been a parent for a while, so you can also get me ready to, to, to experience <laughs> being a parent for the first time, this Christmas spirit. So what are your holiday plans? Man, listen, my, my wife does all of the, she does every holiday great, but in terms of you know, decorating and make sure the spirit is all throughout the household and cookies are made and food is, you know, on the table and trees and presents and stockings and pies oh and everything you could think of. Christmas music playing, the mood set with all of the lighting. I could go on and on, but she's oh. really good at holidays and I'm just good at giving her money to <laughs> make sure that the holidays are taken care of. So there you have it. I know that's right. So what kind of traditions do you do? Because obviously you're American, you grew up in America, but Udatsi is African. So what kind yeah. of different qualities does she bring to it and what kind of stuff from where how you grew up do you bring to it? You know what's crazy? I, I kind of just grew up. There were some Christmases where I didn't get anything. So I'm what? just so appreciative. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, so <laughs> growing up, it's how hard we grow up sometimes, yeah, our parents may not have been able to afford things at times. So for me, I'm happy with whatever she does, but you're right. She does kind of combine some of the westernized things since she's been living here so much. And mostly the food of the culture from Gabon, where she's from, and uh, and try to combine both of those things together for all of these different holiday spirits. So it's, it's African music playing. We've been listening Ooh. to Afro beats since way before it got really popular in the United States. So she's ahead of the game. But I would just say in terms of family traditions, we just plan on being being with each other, loving each other. You know, time is precious. Um, I have all girls, so it's extremely important for me to, to love on these girls and continue to show them what a man is supposed to be in their lives so that I can be that first oh example. Um, and I know we that's a whole other podcast. We could talk for days about that. <laughs> OK, but hopefully I answered your question. You know, I think yes. I think it's just about loving on each other. So do you guys do the I know some people are different with Christmas, like they'll open up the presents either the like the midnight the night of or they'll wait to waking up the next day are y'all which one of y'all are y'all the midnight or are y'all the next day go to sleep wake up type family um i've always had the tradition where you can open up one present at oh. midnight and then you get to open the rest on actual christmas day so yeah you can pick which one it's usually the smallest gift or the one that's you know not the best gift and you hand it to them and say they can all open one present oh, and that that's gets so them even dope. more excited yeah, the, exactly. Because the they're like, ooh, ooh, ooh. So wait a minute. Do your, are your kids <laughs> into the Santa Claus vibe? Are they not into the Santa Claus vibe? Like, what is the, what's the tea on that? Because you got a couple different ages. 
Yeah, they're 100 percent in the Santa Claus vibe. And it's dope. You know, uh, shameless plug that you just mentioned dashing through the snow with me and Little Rail because you don't see many mystical, magical black Santa Clauses oh. in film. And it's important that we were able to do that um, on Disney Plus and that, and now on Hulu, as a matter of fact, that you can watch That's this huge. movie because it represents a black Santa. And they're able to see this movie throughout the lens of, you know, their own skin. And it's a beautiful thing. So they're loving Santa even more now is basically what I was trying to get at. Yeah, and I can't wait to show it to my son. I'm very excited to get into the holiday spirit and show him that movie. That's going to be dope. Okay, so what can you get me into in terms of being a parent for the first time for, for the holidays? Like, what did you remember the first Christmas that you had with your daughter? What is what are some of the most exciting things that you had or that I can look forward to that you experienced? You know, I, I think that if you were not 100% in the holiday spirit mood, and you probably were, but in terms of being a parent, whatever you had growing up as memories that you're going to cherish for a lifetime, you're going to want to recreate those for your child. And so it becomes even more meaningful to have the tree or to decorate or to have the house smelling like, you know, good cooked food for the holidays and to just, just get in that spirit because you know that it's a sense of, of, fe of family, it's a sense of home, and it's a sense of memories that they're going to have attached to their parents for the rest of their lives. So all I would say is that go full throttle for the holidays because your kid is going to remember it and he's going to cherish it. And he's just, it's just, it's just a love, it's a love feeling the same way we grow up when it talked about uh, soul food and how it oh. hits your soul. It's the same way with holidays. I would just say cherish every moment and time goes by very fast. So you got to cherish every single moment, regardless of if it's, if it's the holidays or not. I love that. I love that. Kids <laughs> do make everything more special and, and they do put you in the in the in the space of feeling like, let me really go ten toes downs for this because I want to I want you to see it in a way that even if I don't see it, I want you to see it through those through those eyes because it's just so much more special that way. Yeah. So what is your favorite Christmas memory? You know, I, I hate to I hate to continue to beat a dead horse bear, but my <laughs> favorite Christmas is it's a no, no, I'm saying it's like it's it's a reverse type of thing because when I said that I, there was a Christmas that I didn't receive anything or actually a couple of Christmases, um, that is my best memory because it just taught me again not to take anything for granted, to just be thankful for what you do have and not all like the expectations. You know what I'm saying? You can't always expect things. And, and it, it really just made me want to make sure that that never happened in my life again. So in terms of something that you could take as a negative and turn it into a positive, I would say that was probably the Christmas I cherished the most because it is the most memorable because I was heartbroken. I really feel you on that because, I mean, I remember I had a, a something similar to that when my family and I first moved to you know, from Chicago to California, they were trying to help me do my dreams and stuff like that. You know, we didn't have a lot of stuff. So I remember this one particular Christmas where we didn't we didn't have anything like we went to the store, like the 99 cent store and bought a bunch bunch of gifts and stuff like that, like little toys and stuff that we could afford. But we couldn't yeah. like really have a tree or anything. And I remember my dad being like, well, if you mix flour and water together, y'all can make your own tree. Y'all can kind of put it together with paper. <laughs> so we kind of like made our own glue. And, you know, but I rem but that's like even now when I'm telling you, it was a fond memory, even though it wasn't a lot. It was something to it, right? It's something that it, it told me or gave me, impacted me. And just, I remember my family being really happy just doing that, even though it was kind of like, you know, we didn't have a lot. So it, it's interesting it, how that goes. And what you're saying is it's, it doesn't always have to be about materialistic things. It makes you and forces you to cherish the people that are close to you even more and be thankful for, for life as opposed to yeah. always expecting something materialistic. So that's why I say it. And I'm glad that you shared that story because it just reinforces the, what, I'm, what I'm basically trying to tell people. Yeah. Do you have a favorite Christmas movie or a few? I know sometimes people are like, I ain't got one. I ain't got one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do have a few. But my favorite is probably um, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase. Oh, my gosh. And, I mean, why like, that one? You're funny. You like, you like the jokes. I'm I'm silly. I'm funny. I love to laugh. That right there, I could watch over and over again. It's just hilarious to me. Um, so if if nobody's seen that movie, trust me, you got to watch that. You will laugh. 
100%. Well, now I want to make a quick right turn because you just talking about your silly and everything like that. And it just made me think about all your whimsical music videos that I grew up watching as a kid. I just need to know, like, when you came into the rap game and you brought that new energy and flavor to it, what were you thinking? Like, did you care about, like, being taken seriously? Did you think it was going to be seen as too much of a joke? Like, how did you waver the balance between showing that eccentric and kind of comedic attitude but still saying stuff like move bitch get out the way like how did you <laughs> balance that <laughs> because you know i'm like every human being i'm very multifaceted, and i feel like a lot of rappers only want to show kind of one side of themselves for me i grew up on comedians like um you know martin lawrence and and eddie murphy and richard pryor and now like dave Chappelle. and when i say grew up on this is what i just gravitated towards i just love to laugh so, oh, to answer your question, I was just being myself yeah. and, and, and I was able to accentuate that and I was able to, you know, put it in my creative videos and it was an extension of the songs that I already had and I felt like that was missing in hip hop. So I wasn't afraid to be myself and definitely honorable mention to people like Busta Rhymes and to Missy yes, who kind of paved the way for making things happen like that because I was inspired by their videos as well. I love that, that you know, in typical Virgo fashion, we gonna always give props and show love because Busted Rhymes and Missy <laughs> Elliott definitely were also those multifaceted type of rappers, not just giving us that one note type of vibe, but giving us some type of eccentric, you know, just whimsical, yep. you know, and kind of kitschy energy, um, very theatrical, which I love and appreciate. And then I've got to always ask you this. I want I wanted to always ask you this, too, um, because I know you you did you were a DJ or you hosted a show like a radio show before you were rapping or you were doing it at the same time. Yeah, I was an air personality. I never was it. When people say DJ, they think of people that's like cutting and scratching and um, then, you know, on the turntables or playing the music at a party. That was never me. I just was the, the spokesperson or was the person on air. Uh, but I did that. Yeah, before I got it was actually a means to an end. So I worked at this radio station fresh out of high school because I knew all the producers and all the artists were coming up to the station. I wanted to give them my music to try and get put on as a rapper. So it was really kind of a plan that I had and it ended up working out. But to answer your question, yes, I was 100% at a radio station in Atlanta before I became famous as Ludacris. I'm curious as to how that developed your sound because whenever I think about Ludacris, I'm always thinking about <laughs> like, how did you start doing that? You know what I'm talking about? You know how you'll do that? You'll be like, and you coming in the back and you don't do it. Like, you, I don't know how you do that. It's like you'll be doing it low and then <laughs> your voice just project. Like, how did you come up with doing that? That's It's really a good question because I would say that that was already a part of who I was and you... I do, you kind of develop your style if you've been doing it for so long. I started rapping when I was like nine. But towards your point, when I worked at this radio station, I think that kind of teaches you where you're able to practice enunciation and you're, you're able to, to project your voice because whenever you get on that mic at a radio station, you talking to thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people, sometimes millions. And so that being said, I think it just kind of it, 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 it accentuated my gift even more of being able to pronounce and to do crazy things with my voice. I just love that. That is the signature you. When I'm thinking about you, like nobody is like, that's just Ludicle coming to track and eating in the back and the whack. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just love it so much. Um, yeah. and speaking of you and your crazy entrances, I mean, the Saints Falcons game, this ties into everything we're talking about. Like you just always are coming left field with something. When you told them you wanted to do that, were they like, now nah, Luda, what the hell? Or were they already <laughs> down and ready? Like, <laughs> So they were ready because I believe their mascot, um, the Falcon, has done something similar. But no one has ever performed and <laughs> repelled from the ceiling at the same time. So you know me. I'm like, I'm the thrill seeker. I'm this adrenaline junkie. I'm like, absolutely. I 100% want to do that. It'll be the first thing. Um, it'll kind of like... It's off my bucket list. I'll be able to write that off the bucket list. And it was absolutely amazing. Everything that my name entails, as long as you can throw Ludacris in there, then I'm I'm perfectly fine with any criticism that may come my way because I'm perfectly fine with being Ludacris. <laughs> yes, yes, and it was a great way to, I mean, just show love for Hip Hop's 50th anniversary. I mean, I think that was a great way to bring that in. Oh, 100%. It was, we, we were definitely celebrating 50 years of hip hop. Yes. And in that being the Falcons game, they brought 
over a hundred Atlanta artists. I'm talking about everybody that paved the way for myself, people that came before me, people that came after me. It was a great, great day. Everyone, you know, getting reacquainted with each other, giving each other love. And that's something that Atlanta artists have been doing since the beginning of time. Yeah. I remember certain artists from different places always talking about how people from Atlanta are working together. And that's probably why we're so dominant in the music industry and because there's strength in numbers. So seeing that day come together was amazing. I absolutely loved it. How does it feel to be a part of that? I mean, I know you know, right? But like just when you're reminded, you know, you're experiencing that or even just when I was watching you when you were on tour with Janet. I mean, Janet is like, I mean, that's just all insane. When you look and you see everything that you've accomplished, uh, you know, does it, have you been able to really ever sit back and process it? Or what do you think of it? It's crazy because there are certain days where I'm kind of forced to stay still and truly think about the things that have happened. Like uh, when I just received the, the Hollywood star, that was one of those moments for me where it j I had to stop in my tracks. There were people that came to celebrate me that were very instrumental in my career, people I worked with from the past, the present and the future. And so there are times like when I won the Grammy for best album, humbly speaking, you know, it just made me realize how hard I had to work in order to accomplish that goal. So I would say every every couple of years or so, there's something that happens in my life that forces me to reflect on all of the hard work. Baby, this is Kiki Palmer, yeah. And I, and, I, and I think a lot of people would love to hear, I want to ask you this question, because you've also maintained your success through multiple generations. What is something that, I mean, music is so different now, right? The way people are accessing music and how people are trying to establish their brand and what it means to be a brand. I remember Koi LeRae had put a tweet out not too long ago. She was like, what does it mean to be like, like, how do you get iconic status? Is it like, you know, how many records you sold? Is it like, you know, and for me, when I was thinking about that, I was like, I think it's people that stand the test of time. I think it's somebody that, when I think about somebody that's an icon, it's somebody that's been able to maintain and continue to create. So I want to ask you for anybody that is listening or want to know know how to you know tap into establishing themselves in a way that someone like you has what are some of the like top three things that they would need to do man I don't even I don't even need to give you top three something that's just on my heart as you ask that question to come out for me and I can't speak for everybody but I feel like you cannot be afraid mm -hmm. to evolve and to change with times and not only change with times or whatever it is you're currently doing but you can't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone if you want to explore other areas of entertainment. Yeah. And even if it doesn't work out at first, doesn't mean that you're a failure in it. So what has worked for me is always being very cautious, but something where I feel like, OK, I'm going to step out on this. And you might be a little fearful because as human beings, we all have our you know, inhibitions and things that will kind of make us freeze and stop in our tracks. But I always just say to hell with it and just go that extra step and just do it anyway and see what, and see what happens. So I feel like I'm a risk taker, like an extreme risk taker, no matter what the circumstances, because I follow my heart. And I feel like if more people did that, then they would mm. be able to, to, you know, kind of transition into different things uh, a lot more, but a lot of people are afraid of change and they're afraid to step outside the box that people know them for is the best way that I can try and say. Yeah, and I feel like what you're speaking to also is that you're like a true artist, and you know, from being ludicrous to also being Chris Bridges. And so I'm curious at the, because I, I remember when it was like, you know, it was Ludacris and it was like, Ludacris doing some different stuff. He doing the runaway love and he in crash and now he doing <laughs> this. And like he, things are changing where us as the audience and people that are fans of yours saw you taking those next steps to really like be a staple in the industry. What was going through your mind? Like, what were you thinking as that was happening? Was it a thought of like, man, I don't want to always just rap or I don't want to just be a rapper or I have other visions? Like, what was going through your mind that helped you to kind of like, make those strategic steps that maybe weren't even strategic in the moment. I don't know. No, nah, like it's a great question. And I can tell you as, a, as an example, which is Karma's World, which you're actually a person who voices one of the characters. <laughs> yes, Karma's it's, World. Yeah, I love doing things that are completely outside of the box of what people expect me to do. And so if I have four daughters 
and I see my life going in the direction of loving. Obviously, I've always loved to be a father, but investing even more into them, then I want to be the change that I want to see in the world. So mm -hmm. I'm going to develop this, this cartoon and this animation, and I'm going to make it positive, and I'm going to do it for my daughters, regardless of whoever you know, thanks Ludacris is this hard, you know, hardcore rapper or got criticized for talking about certain things. This is also a part of me. So I'm going to step out no matter what mm -hmm. anyone says. This is just what I'm going to do because I'm going to do it because I'm also a parent. So hopefully that's a good example to you of why I make certain decisions that I'm doing. I can only do things that are dear to my heart and I put my all into certain things. And at the time, it may be completely outside of the realm of whatever someone is championing me for is basically what I'm saying. I love that. It sounds like you're just folding your life experiences and what's true to your heart into your craft in any way that you can. And I think, yeah, I think that's that's true. Alchemizing, that's what artists do. And I mean, I'll never forget little Erica is 11 years old. She said he's trying to figure why the world is so cold. So she popped right. X to get rid of all the pain. I mean, so you already did that. You get what I'm saying? Like with that song, like when you did that song, man, that really changed how, I mean, you really impacted the culture for real. You know what I'm saying? Thank Where you. those lyrics... That's why I'll never forget. Y'all was like, so, you know, she's going to, you're going to do this scene and, you know, the girl's going through X, Y, and Z. So just, you know, listen to the song and do it, you know, do what you feel. Y'all said action and started playing that song. I was like 12 years. I started bawling because wow. I felt those lyrics so strong. So I just feel like That's you definitely deep. have done that. That's really deep. And that, that song was a movement. Like we, we had oh. something called the, the runaway hotline and got so many kids that either had already ran away or thinking about running away got them help before, you know, anything bad happened. And, and the last thing I wanted to say towards that was I also do these things because I want to be an inspiration for people that want to be a multi-hyphenate and don't want to be put in a box and do one thing. And so, you know, it, it, I just want to show people that it's possible that you can start out as a rapper. You can be, a you know, a, an actor. You can become a mm -hmm. producer. You can do all the philanthropist, you, like all of these different things. You can be a creator. And so if I can step outside of my comfort zone and not be afraid for change, then I'm sure that will inspire other people to do the same. I love that. I love that. And so obviously we're talking about the holiday, dash it through the snow is out. But, you know, when I think about the, the Christmas, I think <laughs> about also the year's ending. So I want you to tell me, like, what has this year meant to you? You know what I mean? Like what if you could put in a few words, what has this year meant? What has it brought to you? And then what are you looking forward to the next year bringing to you? What is your expectations for 2024? You know, it's funny. You, it's funny. You said it. you just said the word of what I think 2023 <laughs> sold up. You said the word expectations. Now, this is going to be a little bittersweet. So I hope you're ready for it. I'm ready. It, it took me this long on Earth to finally come to the conclusion that I have to accept people for who they are. Oh, and I think every celebrity one. can, uh, every celebrity and every human being can relate to what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Is the word expectations, like we have higher expectations for some people than they have for themselves. And so you'll get hurt each and every single time. And I, I want so much more for certain people than they want for themselves. And I would fight and fight and try to Ugh. give people opportunity and give them a hand up as opposed to a hand out. Uh, that's what I thought. I thought I was giving them a hand up, but they only took it as a hand out. So that being said, I have no expectations of people. I want them to surprise <laughs> me and I accept people for exactly who they are and they show me who they are. Period. Oh, my gosh. That's so true. I feel the same way. And I do think it's a little bit of a Virgo thing because we really, we are so like, you know, I got you. I got you. And sometimes that right. I got you bites us in the ass. And it's like, it's better. Oh, all we, the, it bites us on the ass all the time. What do you literally, mean sometimes? Because people literally don't want us to have them because they actually need to fall so they can learn. And it's very hard to literally accept the fact that, yeah, you know, my expectations for somebody is not the reality of who they are. Like, I know who they could be. And if I could just jump in their body real quick, I could figure it out. But that's not that's not the case. So that is one that I'm still trying to figure out. So I'm glad to hear that, I, you know, I ain't alone with that one. <laughs> <laughs> you are not. You are not alone at all. I'm, I'm glad that you realize that you are so not alone. So, yeah, I'm. <laughs> I'm with you. Okay, and then 2024, what are you looking forward to for 2024? What's on the rise? Man, I got I haven't put out music in like eight years, I want to say. So, you know, part of that is because this Fast and Furious franchise got us sold up. They keep coming out that. with more. 
we started in two and now we at 10. And but, in um, space and shit, like that is so, oh, like yeah. Fast and Furious <laughs> is ridiculous, dude, but we keep coming back for more. Yeah, it is. Um, so yeah, I, I want to put out, I'm definitely putting out some music in 2024. Ooh, I, I'm ready for the, come <laughs> on. I'm so ready for that. I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay, so I've obviously had a blast talking to you, and I feel the Christmas spirit in the air. But before you go, we're going to play a game. Okay, today okay. we're going to play Sorry to This Man. Okay, I'll I'll play popular Christmas songs, and you have to guess the name of the song. But okay. the catch is you only get to hear the first second of the song. Okay? And if you don't know gotcha. the name of the song, you have to say Sorry to This Man. Okay? Now, okay. I did this last year, and it was really hard. So I'm wishing you luck. So, um... <laughs> I'm terrible at Christmas songs, but we'll see. Okay, here we go. First one up. Rocking around the Christmas tree. That is not the song. Sorry to this man. That's what they say in the song. Rocking around the Christmas tree is a holiday. Oh, Jingle Bell <laughs> Rock. Ah. But that is it, though. So actually, you got that because that is because they're rocking around the Christmas thing, and it says the jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. So you're right. Yeah. You just sang the okay. first part. You got it. I'm gonna let you have that. Give, it's jingle give me bell. a half a point. Give me a half. Half a point. a point for that. Okay. The second one is I, this. I don't want a lot for Christmas. Oh wow! Da, 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 da. Mariah Carey. He's actually really good. All I want for Christmas by Mariah Carey. <laughs> Wait a minute, now, Luna. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, next one. Another half a point. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I have no idea what the hell that is. I'm trying. My brain is like. I also didn't know that one either. But it's Last Christmas by Wham. Sorry to this. Okay, no, nah, I didn't know that. I yeah. knew it was old school. I knew it was old school 70s, but I had no idea what song that was. Also, when you got up so close to the camera, all I could see is your one baby daughter. Why do your kids look exact? Like, literally, I know <laughs> Udati is mad because they literally have your exact face. It's insane. <laughs> That's the strong exactly jeans. Like, strong jeans, man. They look strong exactly like you. Yep. Okay, here's the fourth one. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. <laughs> Dang, I know that. I know that. Play it one more time for him, guys. Boom, 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 boom. I I know this song is <laughs> killing me, and it was in a movie. I uh, damn, I'm gonna have to forfeit. It's I don't. Santa Baby by Earth the Kid. Sorry to this man. Okay, no, I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have got that. Two out of four. Two out of four ain't bad. Yes, and this is the last one. I'm ending on this one because you gotta know this one. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Shake a hand, shake a hand. Bang on a mistletoe. So, so I'm gonna get, get to know, know you better. better. Yes! Da, 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 da. This, this Christmas. Christmas. First yeah. of all, the Wi Fi between us is exceptional because there was no delays with that singing. We were right <laughs> on time. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Merry Luda Christmas, everybody. Merry Luda Christmas. You the best, man. You the best. And I just want y'all to know, I know Atlanta claimed him, but he is really from Illinois. Okay, it's Midwest in this mother... Born L I was born in Champaign, Illinois. Love to both, man. Like, all of Illinois, all of Georgia. Man, yes. thank you for this opportunity. I'm glad we finally got a chance to make it happen. Won't be the last. No, it won't. You the best. Love you down. All right, love you. Tell mom I said what up. I sure will. All right, peace. I really am feeling the Christmas spirit, y'all. I'm off to make some hot chocolate, decorate the tree, and watch A Diva's Christmas Carol for the 100th time. It never gets old. I want to wish all of our listeners a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. I'm just so grateful for all of you guys. As a wise woman once said, All I want for Christmas is you. And I mean you, listeners. That's all for now. You know it's your girl, baby, this is... This is Kate.